Hello there. It is Wednesday, the 18th of November, 2020. It's 2pm here. 2.30pm here in the UK. <laughs> I've just lost half an hour. And uh, various other times all around the world. Thank you very much for joining me here. It's... Mm, it's the Scottish call this Drich. It's raining, it's grey, it's miserable, it's November. <sighs> and we're in the middle of lockdown. Uh, this is 2020, so if you're watching this in 10 years' time, <laughs> you may remember the coronavirus <laughs> that is going on. It's even better news about the vaccine today. So 92% success or something like that. So maybe, maybe by the summer things will start getting better. But let's try and make it a little bit better here. <sighs> and I better just check, first of all, <laughs> my microphone's working and things like that yes 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 it's all a bit technical as i said last week i had this little box uh, it has little buttons on the front that it means i can just press them and change the scenes which makes it really really easy and uh, it blew up and i sent it to el gato and they said they're going to send me another one and i'm just waiting and i'm really really missing it because at the moment i have to Go on the screen and click little things to change scenes and things like that. So, uh, <laughs> let me see who have we got here at the moment. Crazy Art and Crafts World. Hi, Jason, Jason. Hi, Jason, Jason. That's uh, okay. Uh, Big Shed Art. Hi there. How are you? This is a lovely treat for a grey soggy afternoon. <laughs> yes, it is. Hilaria. Hi, Luigi Verona. I hear the tea drinking going on. Oh, coffee tea ah, you can probably hear tea drinking going on uh, in other people's um, uh, people who are watching I imagine have generally got a cup of tea and I am drinking so I've got a nice um, Alice in Wonderland mug which I got from the British Museum actually and I went there last year they did a, a big exhibition about manga and they started off with um, with Alice in Wonderland and Tennille's wonderful drawings and um, thinking that this was really the beginning of manga, which I suppose in a way it was. <laughs> so um, what else have we got? So uh, I'm drinking tea and I don't drink milk. I don't have milk. I don't have sugar. And because of that, I'm a bit picky about the kind of tea that I drink. So I drink a mix. I drink a blend. Um, so <laughs> I have a blend of Lapsang Souchong, which has that kind of smoky flavor to it, and and strawberry tea. So I have 50-50 Lapsang Souchong with strawberry tea. So you get that sort of slightly sweet strawberry flavor with that little bit of smokiness on top. Oh, I can see things going on here. So um, Louis Verge, ta also drinking tea. Hi, Lawrence, how are you? <laughs> checking in and watching, looking forward to this very much. Uh, Luigi says, wonderful mug. Uh, Valeria says 24th of November is my birthday, which is soon next week. Happy birthday. Uh, Carolyn, hi, how are you? Hi, go for hot chocolate. <laughs> uh, bad habit. I suppose English is, um, we English are a bit tea drinkers. Actually, we're not tea drinkers like we used to be. I think everybody's, oh, the English, yes, nice cup of tea. And uh, so, but I think uh, thanks to Starbucks and everybody, I think we've become a nation of coffee drinkers now. But so, some of us cling on and like our cup of tea. Uh, bad habits. Hi, Brian from North Carolina here. How are you doing? Uh, uh, Judy says, lovely mug in her big shed. Uh, <laughs> Velvet Lily Bad Hello for Kansas City. Hello from Syria. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking too far as Pam Walker. Hello from Newport Gwent. That is just down the road from me. <laughs> so, so we've got people all around the world and people just down the road. That's amazing, isn't it? Uh, Kathy Sunshine. Hello all. I love Alice in Wonderland. Oh, I keep thinking maybe I should do um, some how to draw like Tennille. I mean, yeah, it's not not easy. He's just a, a brilliant, brilliant illustrator. And really kind of, I think, the the the, the, the big daddy of, of them. I think around about the same time you had kind of cutesy, cutesy kind of illustrators. Um, but I think Tennille was the first kind of sort of tough uh, illustrator and however kind of sweet <laughs> Alice in Wonderland is the illustrations are really quite kind of pointy pointed and to the to the point and 
not well they're kind of children's book illustrations but then again you know Alice in Wonderland is written on so many levels um, in fact there's a whole lot in there in Alice in Wonderland about US elections in fact <laughs> so, if, or is that in the 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 second one which is Alice through the looking glass when they have they have the caucus race and all the animals go round and round and round and round in circles and no one ever wins uh, and that was um, Lewis Carroll's comment on American politics at the time <laughs> which is quite pertinent at the moment I suppose so anyway I thought today that I would talk about um, water brushes I've got oh what I, I thought I had I was looking for another one today and I've just discovered it. <laughs> so I got three here and I had uh, a comment yesterday from Matt Marshall who uh, said you know so how long should they last well I got three here and I'm just going to change over to the overhead uh, camera and don't forget you know if you've got questions put them in the comments box and I'll, I'll get to them in a minute um, and you can see what have we got going on here looking at that I would say that was the newest <laughs> that was the second newest and that was the oldest and why do I say that because that's looking a little bit green isn't it and wow, when you leave water hanging around it does kind of get things start growing um, in them and so <laughs> Partly what, what partly what could be happening is that as you are painting, um, if you really press squeeze hard and then let go, then it'll it'll suck back into the barrel. So you might sort of suck colour back into the uh, into the barrel. And so there might be some colour in there. But also this has been sitting around for a little while and it might have things growing in it algae and bugs and stuff like that so really um what you need to do in fact i was thinking about this earlier today and i put a little link in the comments box down below to there's an amazon link there uh, and i need to say i'm an affiliate so if you buy that from there i get a commission but you don't pay any extra um and uh, i put a little link down there for a bottle brush and I've got one uh, in the kitchen so I, and I'm, I'm just, <laughs> just sent off for this new little set because the one I've got I have to really to squeeze that bottle brush into it uh, and then jiggle it about but I've seen this little set which look a lot better um, so you can clean out the insides and then maybe add a bit of bleach in the water and just leave it soaking in bleach and then you have this section here. I'm just going to find my glasses. So this is the main section. Um, and I think I'm going to zoom in a bit. And I don't know if you can see that clearly. I'll try and get, I'm just going to bring a bit more light right over on the top of this here. Um, there's this little bit around here and some of it has broken off. And that happens over time. Um, and and it can't <laughs> I find that sometimes then the brushes can start sort of pulling out and it cracks and all sorts of things happen to it uh, and Matt um, said you know how long should they last well I think it depends on how much you <laughs> use it really um, so uh, what I'm going to do is to uh, I'm going to pinch the the brush part and really pinch it hard and then push it a little bit and you'll hear it snap um, and then it still doesn't go through and then yeah so then you can push the whole thing out and this is the brush section here oh there like that um, and it's all it's, it's it's a load of nylon fibers and they are all ground so that they're all kind of fine at one end and thick at the other and they kind of get them all together like that and and i, I really should be I, I think i'll go and put this in some bleach later so then uh you need to sort of clean that out and i would leave that in you know very it doesn't need to be strong but a little bit of bleach and then when you've um done that and leave it for an hour or so like that just to kill anything off uh, any growth <laughs> uh, 
um, then uh, then get some washing up liquid or some soap or something like that. I can see one little stray hair there. Can you see that? And in fact, there's a couple. And I'm just going to pull those out because they become really annoying. Uh, and they're just kind of sticking out. Um, and then and then just gently massage this with a bit of soap and and then rinse it out thoroughly and then we have this little bit here which is mm. <laughs> let me find something um, pointy I've got my scalpel here that might do it uh, no so you need something pointy to um, excuse me just a minute while I look for something pointy. How about a, a compass thing like that? So in here we have, I'm going to just very gently push that bit out there. And I, honestly, I have no idea what this is. But it's, it, it looks like a tube, but it's not. <laughs> and it's cut at a, a diagonal as well. And you need to just, you know, maybe blow through that just to make sure that's clean. And, and just soak that in the bleach for a bit. I'm not sure about this. I would leave that out. And then put it back in, but don't press it hard. If you press it in hard, it will tend to block it all up. <coughs> now, uh, I'm trying to think, how am I going to get this bit out? <laughs> I've got an Ikea spanner. Is that going to help? No. So I need some kind of a tool to push this out. Um, I should have done all this beforehand, shouldn't I? So I need something. Something thin and long and pointy. Um, like the end of a pen or something like that. And now this is where you can kind of completely ruin it, really, I think. So... You need to just somehow get in and push it down like that. And and you can see here where over time it, it should be nicely up to the top like that. And all these little bits are broken away. And I, I don't know how that happens. I've never been aware of it. And then here you've got a little bit of, um, what do you call it? A little bit of kind of foam. And you want to get that covering over the that hole like that, and again soak this in bleach for a little bit of what bit, bit of time, and clean it up afterwards. So then, eventually, and then again with this, soak this, and put your bottle brush through there, get it nice and clean, and then eventually you're going to want to push this back in again. So let's go <laughs> reverse the process, and just kind of push that through and then you need to get this nicely pointed together and then just just very very gently it's this fingertip stuff just kind of gently tap it through because you don't want to um, you know sort of <laughs> twist those fibers basically and then we put this back in with the white bit first and this is <laughs> this is always difficult. <laughs> so you have to somehow wiggle that about inside. And it's this is never easy. This bit. I'm trying to think what I usually use. Um, I'll, let me try and get a bit of pencil in there. IKEA pencil. That seems. Oh, there we are. That's got it. Yeah. And then you just want to gently push it in. And then you'll have your clean water again, <laughs> remember, in your nice clean barrel. And then you screw it back together again. And and I think this is something you need to do, because I think I was quite um, uh, cavalier, I think. Is, is that a word? I think I was quite cavalier when I first started using these and just bish, bosh, bash. And and if you just stab them into the, <laughs> into the lid, then the brushes get caught. The fibres, rather, they get caught and bent back and all sorts of things. So now I do take my time and I just make sure that they're nicely pointed together and just gently put it in and 
snap and then that will keep it lasting for a long time so if you are a bit bish bosh bash um, and you just stab it in then i think uh it's not going to last as long as it would if you were a bit more careful how long should it last i really really don't know that depends on how much you use it um, and uh i think every time that you pull it apart to clean it it's probably not helping it <laughs> it's cleaning it but i think it might you know you're probably doing something to it that is going to um shorten its life um and this is this is a fairly new one so here i don't know if you can see there the i can see there's a lot of people typing stuff in the comments box here you can see look, let me compare the two um you can see that this one has got quite a lot has been chipped away and i think i think maybe it's just that the plastic deteriorates and it, it just becomes more brittle or something and just kind of bends and breaks so i think it, it depends a lot oh, which one was there <laughs> so i think it depends on um how how much you use it how, how what's this one like so this one's actually completely dry this is an old one <laughs> and you can see i went and got some um, tape and taped it around the top there to keep it all together so this is obviously an old one i haven't i don't use anymore and and if you leave them to go dry they will kind of lose that point and um so maybe just a little bit of spit <laughs> helps to bring it back together because it kind of glues it a little bit so then you can put it back in there give it some more water in the barrel and off you go again i think the secret is keeping that point um, now the other thing is that this is a broad tip and i only use a broad tip you know you can get sets with fine and flat and all sorts of things and I just haven't found any need for them, <laughs> any use for them. And I just love this one brush. And I've tried all sorts of different brands and I always come back to the Pentel Aquash. It's, for me, it's, it's the best. Um, I wouldn't mind if they made one just slightly more broad. That would be even better. Uh, and because it does have a very fine point, but it's also quite broad. So you can be quite splishy splashy. And if you squeeze a little bit, you can. Well, it's such an adaptable thing. So we'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. So that's about the water brush. Well, uh, yeah, the other thing about the water brush, what is different from a normal brush is that the water is in the handle. And so as you paint, as you draw your brush across the paper, it's it's pulling water down from the reservoir in the barrel. So you don't need to squeeze. Um, and, and if you squeeze, it does tend to block it up. So, <laughs> so try not to do that. And, um, it, it, you know, I've, I, I sort of found when I've got, sometimes I get carried away and I squeeze like mad or something and then pff, it just it just stops and you can't squeeze and it won't flow and you have to pull it apart and clean it and all that sort of stuff. So so be gentle with it, it, it and, and it will just flow it's sort of it's not gravity it's it's capillary action that's pulling the water down into the brush and and and, and so that is very different to a normal brush where you have a dry brush that which you then add water to it and you pick up color uh, here the the brush the, the water is always flowing so in a normal brush um you have a blob of color and as you paint it, it stays the same it's the same mix of color that you've mixed up whereas with a water brush is as you paint it's getting thinner and thinner and thinner until eventually it will just become clear water and that is very different it takes a little while to understand and to get uh, <laughs> to know how to use it now i'm just going to come back to the main camera yes there we go and i'll go and read some of your comments because i can see there are quite a few so where did we get to lovely mug <laughs> um 
Luigi Verona a closed terrarium, basically. Oh, yes. I see what you mean. Yes. Uh, a, ter a terrarium, I think, actually... I'm being pedantic here, aren't I? I think a terrarium is an enclosure for reptiles. <laughs> so it would be an, al an alginarium or something like that. Um, uh, an aquarium is a... a, a an enclosure for water creatures which in theory this would be but i suppose the easiest thing is to call it a vivarium it's a it's a container for live things <laughs> so, i'm getting very pedantic uh let me says i actually have a proper closed terrarium on my windowsill cool uh, and then Kathy Sunshine, immediately I'm thinking you don't want to get too much sunshine in your terrarium. Kathy Sunshine, I like the art that shows opposing political views through so called children's fairy tales, Gulliver's Travels, Alice, etc., etc., like that. I think so many children's books, that, well, I think there are a lot of children's books where you've got dual things going on. There's something for the adults and something for the children, and it might seem terribly nice and pretty. And you might find something in the illustrations that's <laughs> it's going to go whoosh, straight over the children's heads uh, and in the story. And uh, the parents would be going, all oh, right, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so there are sort of two messages. And sometimes it's political, sometimes it's philosophical, what, whatever, you know, what, whatever it is that the author <laughs> is trying to get across. And, and I think that... <laughs> That, that is the thing I do remember. I had this fantastic editing session um, with my book, The Ginger Ninja, many, many years ago. And I'd, I'd written it and my fantastic, um, I might have mentioned it, there's, there's um, I don't know if I'll, I'll ever get to put the link <laughs> up there. <laughs> um, I did an interview with uh, my old editor, Fiona, and we might have talked about this, I can't remember. But she came to see me for the day and she, psh, shutting up her pants when we started editing. And the first thing she would do was she'd go sort of reading through and just, whoosh, whoosh, and just completely cross out um, whole paragraphs. I said, what's the matter with that? She said, oh, you're preaching. You're on a soapbox and you're, you're, you're preaching. <laughs> and, and she was absolutely right. And what I was, do what I was doing is in the story, it's the, the, the basic thing about the story in the Ginger News about bullying and self-belief and stuff like that. And so I'd kind of write the story and then every now and then I'd sort of stop in the middle and go, no, children, it's really, really bad to bully. And kids don't want, don't want that. They know it's bad to bully. They want the story. And within the story, that it leaves them with something and makes them think. If you stop every now and then and point a finger at children or any readers, adults as well, and say, no, you must do this, you must do that. They switch off and they might never get to the end of the story and they never actually get the message. So she would say, get off your soapbox. And um, and so I do that. I, I edit myself now as I'm as I'm writing. I think, you know, I really want to get this feeling across, this idea across. Uh, and then uh, then I come to edit and I think, oh, that's preaching. I'm on my soapbox and I can, I can feel myself it's, as I'm reading it back. I can feel myself stepping up onto the soapbox to start pointing a finger and I edit it out immediately um, and try not to do that. <laughs> it, has to be, it has to be subtle. If you want to get messages across, you have to be very, very subtle. Uh, simple and subtle and not mm. <laughs> people don't like that <laughs> um where are we now uh, luigi said it's also funny how we as kids have no clue exactly there we are so the, uh tearing guy train guy hi hello from new jersey sunny cold beautiful day cool uh melody garden is morning in new jersey isn't it this must be about, what, 10 o'clock something like that uh, Melanie Garner, I clean my water brushes with vinegar. Oh, that's a good idea. Or rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol helps to get rid of staining colours and vinegar cleans everything. So yeah, I will try that. <laughs> also both kill bacteria and moulds that could grow. Bacteria, that's probably another word I wasn't using. Kathy Sunshine, lounging. You are so right. That makes it cool. Since the powers to be cannot prove it's not innocent children's entertainment. <laughs> Uh, relax says hello party people Jose Adriano Queros hello from Brazil <laughs> um, obrigado that's my only word of Spanish I'm afraid 
which is thank you but it's, what's hello well anyway uh kathy such i typed luigi twice but spell check got me sorry um relax i didn't manage to join one of your lives since lockdown well i haven't really done many since lockdown i mean the first one but good to see you again good uh bernardino brazil saludes de guadalajara jalisco 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 guadalajara where's that mexico Joseph Miller, hi shoe from Connecticut. <laughs> People all over the place. Man, you got a right shoe, Renadroy. It was my childhood. Now I am in training to become a professional artist. It's crazy, but I'm still watching. Fantastic. <laughs> Kathy Sunshine, I tend to wash and dry between uses, but admittedly, I have way too much time on my hands. <laughs> uh, hi, Ray, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, Nicole, Nicole, you, Nick, you are in New Zealand. You shouldn't be awake. <laughs> you really shouldn't be awake. Anyway, lovely to see you. Uh, Melody gone. I also don't think I have ever seen someone take apart a Pentel pocket brush. This is good information that I never expected to get today. Good. See. Uh, Kid senior, or well, that, if that was Welsh, it would be Siakev. Siakev, share. Hmm. Uh, enjoyed your videos. <laughs> Lawrence, apologies to use those Spectra double edit markers that I said they are not water soluble after all. Uh, well, I think they are. I've, I've muddled them up. I've, I've, I've put some stuff on that I don't know what makes me think they were. I've realized after they are alcohol. Boy. No, they're not. I will show you in a minute, maybe uh miles Straz uk hi <laughs> valerio smiley smiley miles hi valerio lots of faces lots of faces what is that miles Straz has been crossed out oh i don't know if i should what is that uh it's a it's a little drawing that says hello how do you do that <laughs> Uh, Mark says, I like your drawings. Joseph Miller, I carry my water pens with me all the time. Mostly I use them in combination with standard brushes. Cool. Mark says, Super Rain drawing. He is the best. Thank you very much. Snake Cave, I love your cat drawing. Thank you. Well, he says, Joseph Miller say, most of the time I use water brushes to wet my colours and then I use normal brushes for painting. Uh, I'm going to just sort of start going through the, the main one. I play with my water brushes, says Cathy Sunshine. To loosen up and just for fun but mostly i enjoy teeny points for my miniature flowers etc oh i'm always sucker for a good flower painting blah, 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 blah. uh matt marshall i think i need to get me some real brushes instead of using water brushes all the time well i don't know uh well yeah it doesn't hurt um but i use i find i just keep coming back to water brushes now um i don't know but i think when i start a new job or whatever brush i pick first then i have to keep using that at the end uh, until i finish whatever it is i'm doing of course uh, i think that any tips for creating your own children's book story characters first and build a story or have a story and then create the characters i think it's whatever works for you <laughs> i generally uh, i generally need to work out the characters but i have an idea for the story i have an idea for a whole kind of thing and um and then I have to work out the character. And once I get the character, then I find that uh, uh, I can work with the character. They become like a real little person inside my head and I can work with them. And they kind of help me write the story and put send me in the right directions, if that makes any sense. It's, it's not a spooky spiritual thing. It's very practical. <laughs> um, uh, Miles says, like your children's joy, thank you. Uh, Kathy's like, Melanie, I love flowers also. I'm not that, that talented, I'm sure you are, but grandnieces love new portraits for their doll's house and little frame miniatures in general are very fun to collect. Fantastic, I like that. <laughs> uh, Janice says, hello from Virginia. <laughs> Which paper is better for watercolour, cold press or hot press? That is a very good question. I'll come back to the moment. Sesh says, hi, Sesh. Uh, happy, I made it to the live stream, still eagerly awaiting. Good. Chell McPherson, Miles, did you know if you rub pencil on paper, it'll make a dusty feel on your paper? Yes. And then if you turn it over, you can use it like carbon paper and for tracing through onto things. So where was that question? Uh, which paper? Uh, Natalia Rivas. Hello, which paper is better for watercolour, cold press or hot press? <sighs> Let me change cameras. 
there's so much to catch up on isn't there there's, there's, there's a strange thing about live doing live it's the um let me get the overhead camera out. there we are the thing about live is you've got all this chat coming in um so you have to sort of stop every now and read things and some of it's hi 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 which is great um but I kind of feel I should be talking about drawing and stuff and it's very easy to get distracted. Especially, I've been drawing all day and so it's quite nice. What were we talking about? Papers. Um, right, I got various papers because people asked me about this last week. Oh, and this is one, uh, let me zoom out. So this is one that I do like a lot. Uh, Grand Saturday, so this is hot pressed. Let me find my glasses again. <laughs> um, I'm kind of one of those people who I can start with a beautiful tidy desk. I get it all tidy but, and press that go button. Let's go live and within two seconds it's it's like a bomb's hit it. So this is Archer's Aquarelle watercolour paper. So I really like this. Um, Grand Setting a hot pressed. It's 300 grams. So um, this well, you can't really see it probably but this is uh, really smooth and and it's kind of thick so I wouldn't call it card but it's thick paper and I really like it it kind of it has got the strength of um, fiber and, and it's cotton as well probably pure cotton um, so it, it takes a lot of color um and but what i like about it is because i'm an illustrator is that because it is a flat surface really nice and smooth then it works really well in a scanner when you have a hot press uh, a, a cold press you get little dimples and things that you get much more texture in the paper and that will show up as kind of you know shadows and shapes and things uh, this is um, C white, so this is um, a drawing pad. So here, I don't know if you can see the yeah, other. You can see this is really quite textured, but at the same time, it's really quite nice to work on. It's, it's a really nice paper to to paint on. It takes a lot of colour, takes a lot of um, of moisture, and it just sucks it up. Um, uh, and, and it's strong is the, is the thing about it this is another one that I quite like uh, called Botanical Ultra Smooth and and again <laughs> well I <laughs> say so you probably can't see it. you can't see it because you can't because there is no texture to see and it is very very smooth and good for um, for scanning so let me find and, and bizarrely the the actual paper that they use on the front is, is quite textured itself uh, so this is acid free surface sized so sizing is um, I'm trying to think what it is it's a kind of a glue where they cover the surface in it's, it's a kind of a glue um, but it, it kind of interacts you know with the watercolor and stuff like that as well this is 50% cotton watercolor paper so I'm not quite sure what the other 50% is going to be <laughs> it could be kind of you know recycled um, socks or something like that I don't know uh, and and this is this one here it's the lantern this is not cold pressed I showed you this one last week and you can see here yeah you can see that this is again textured so this is this is the kind of paper you will generally see you know watercolor painters use when they're out doing um, you know landscapes and things like that um, and if you put that onto a scanner you're going to pick up the illustration but you're also going to pick up this um, this pattern and which isn't a bad thing if you want to have that kind of watercolor look in your illustrations but <laughs> where it falls down is if you want to have a vignette um, so a, an illustration on its own with white around it uh, because you're going to get this this, this this grain all around it and if you kind of work the scan to get rid of that you're going to bleach out the actual illustration itself so the flatter and smoother the paper 
you paint with, the easier it is to knock out all the white so that when you print it, you get the illustration on a white background without the kind of a gray mushiness mess just kind of hazing around it. Does that make sense? Let me come back to <laughs> there. In fact, while I'm at it, if you enjoyed these shows and you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee to keep me going, head on over to patreon.com slash shoe where you will find all the details of how you can support this channel. In the meantime, on with the show. Oh yes, on with the show. And what am I doing on Patreon at the moment? Uh, so what I'm doing on my Draw Stuff Real Easy channel, uh, you, you mean you're not subscribed to Draw Stuff Real Easy? <laughs> then you should be. I'll Draw Stuff Real Easy. Uh, I've started doing lots more, uh, sort of just straight, you know, draw this, draw that, it's draw stuff. Um, so I'm doing that at the moment, but I'm uh, on my Patreon channel. You can get, uh, you can see the video without adverts, which might be useful to you. And um, I'm also doing sort of help sheets and stuff like that and sort of images that you can sort of see to copy just to make things a little bit easier. And I'm also doing my, I got a new story channel. <laughs> I've tried, I've tried starting a story channel once or twice before and it never quite worked. But I think I've kind of got it worked this time. It's called, it's called, it's called Learn English Through Story. So I'm doing it in a slightly different way. And uh, so I'm going to make those videos available on, on Patreon without ad advertising as well. <coughs> Excuse me. If you've got uh, headphones on, I probably just blew your eardrums out then. <clears throat> Excuse me. So have we got a few more things about that? What have we got? Um, let me check the thing, thing, thing. Um, so I was asking about paper. Happy to make the live stream. Which paper? There we are. Um, so yes, there we are. Um, do you know if you yeah we did that so <laughs> this is mill from millie from india hi how are you uh do you ever get burned out <laughs> you so creative for years oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh um i think you need to ask judy in the big shed about that i think it's it's uh, it's um i i I don't know. I, th I think I'm probably a little bit ADHD or something like that. <laughs> and uh, I, I suppose I just love what I do as well. And I wake up in the morning and sometimes I wake up and go, oh. and, but I've just, I just, I just learned over the years, that if you sit down and you pick up a pencil or whatever, and you just get going, then the, you know, the creative juices appear and, and off you go. Um, and, I always have sort of, you know, I've always had hundreds of ideas. I, I, I know particularly, I remember a job I had when I was about early 20s and I worked in screen printing and I used to do artwork for screen printing. So I would sit there all day on my own. It was like a big factory and we had a little art department in the corner and I'll sit there on my own and, and, and you know, cut and paste, you know, you do control V and things like that. Well, cut and paste in the old days was, you got your swan modern scalpel and you used to actually cut out the letters and paste them down and then you photograph them and then print things from that. So I'd be doing that all day and um, and, and I'd just be thinking and and then every now and then, well, every now and then, like every five minutes go, I go, oh, wow, I just had this incredible idea. And everybody in the factory would go, oh, no. So they'd all have to sit around and listen to my incredible idea. and then, by the time I finished telling them about it, I go, oh, maybe you know, it's not that good, is it? Because <laughs> while I was explaining it, I'd see all the the bad points and how it wasn't going to work. And uh, but every now and then, you know, you've got to go through a hundred really bad ideas to have one really good one. But if you don't go through those hundred bad ideas, you're not going to have a good one. So every now and then, um, you know, you get one really good one, and it won't leave you, and you have to just keep working at it. And sometimes those ideas, they nag away at you for a week, a year, <laughs> 10 years, <laughs> and, and you can't give them up. And they become these little projects you just keep returning to and returning to. And sometimes they amalgamate with other ideas and they sort of come together and become something even better. 
Um, and, and, uh, and, and so that's the way to do it. And I think also, um, if you're going to, <clears throat> excuse me, it, it's, I think being a, a, a creative, um, <laughs> just, it's what we've become now. We used, I think, I know that we used to be called commercial artists and things like that. Um, but I think sort of all people who kind of work in the arts are one way and we're now called creatives. Um, uh, I think, you know, it's, it's just something that you do. And I, there was a comment this week, I remember, uh, on my channel with an interview I did um, with another illustrator. And the comment was, oh, I bet he makes peanuts. And, you know, what's the point of doing that job? And I bet, you know, bet he makes peanuts and he works all day to, <laughs> to earn nothing. And and in fact, that illustrator doesn't earn peanuts at all. He, he earns quite a lot, actually. He's very well off and, uh, and he's very busy, but he loves what he does. And, and even if you didn't pay him, he would still go and do it, which is, uh, of course, partly the downfall of creatives that they will do it for nothing. So um, I think when you choose uh, that this is going to be my life and how I'm going to live and what's going to give me a living, then that changes things. Um, and so uh, I think some I think some creatives who work designers and things like that, then they will be uh, waiting for clients to come along and say, can you do this for me? Whereas um, the kind of thing that I do is that I keep coming up with new ideas and I have to go off and sell them to publishers and, and sort of keep, keep coming up with new ideas. And again, you have to come up with lots of bad ideas before you get a good one. <laughs> and publishers will tell you when you've done a bad one. So um, so I think that's another thing, you know, that, that uh, you know, I got married, I got children and a mortgage and you just have to keep coming up with ideas. And so... Um, it becomes a habit, I suppose, to, to do that and, uh, you know, keep a sketchbook on the go because if you don't write down those ideas, they disappear. Um, and I think uh, I think every freelancer is always terrified, you know, what's going to happen next week. And, you know, there's a lot, a lot of freelance um, artists. You know, Corona has just... Oh, I feel so sorry for them. They, 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 oh, I can't even begin to talk about it. Um, you know, the, the whole industries have just stopped and, and and they're not earning anything at all. I'm I'm really lucky that I've got something coming in from YouTube and things like that, which is why I'm asking you to support me on Patreon as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so so I think that that is something that really urges you on to be creative and to keep coming up with new ideas, which is kind of what we're talking about. I think is that do I ever get burned out? Do I ever get burned out? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think there are times when I have been yeah depressed. I would say clinically depressed, probably. And um, uh, and and again, there's been that mortgage to pay at the end of the month, so I just carried on, carried on, and carried on, and and eventually you get it all back together again. It sort of comes back. But if you do get burned out, um, and and quite often I get comments about what do I do? I I've got block, and uh, you know if ever I kind of, I don't think I've ever really sort of can say that I have had creative block. I've had moments when I think, oh, I don't know what to do with this, or I'm a bit tired. If you're tired, then have a break. Um, and But the best thing that I've found is, is to go walking. And particularly if something's not working out and you can't work it out, I, I, I go for a walk and within about half a mile, it, it comes to me and I think, oh yeah, that's where I'm going wrong. And and then I keep walking and 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 you know you feel good because you think yeah I've worked it out and when you get back oh, I want to get down and um, put this thing into practice so let's see what other things that we got um, Janice Glines Glines I watched you a while back to learn how to draw and watercolor a snowman that was a long time I did that yeah. I have to catch you online two weeks in a row. Cool. Sesh Jaws, thank you, thank you, thank you for your feedback on my book. Good. 
Well done. I'm, I haven't heard back from you, so I'm slightly worried that I'd <laughs> upset you. I hope I hadn't. Um, it's really difficult if people do send me things, um, books and things like that, to have a look at. And it's just, it's very easy to go, oh, this is fantastic, well done. But I feel I need to give some kind of constructive criticism, which is a bad word, isn't it? Constructive criticism, is that's okay. Um, and and if I don't hear back, I start to get worried. I think, oh, have I upset this person? So no, I, I'm glad. I hope I haven't upset. <laughs> Thanks, Sesh. There we are. In value, and I appreciate all the feedback. I'm so happy uh, I get to tell you live. Thank you so much. I'm very pleased to hear that too, because I've been worried. I hadn't heard from you, Sesh. Uh, Sesh is in South Africa. Uh, Miles says, I, I subscribe. Thank you. Um, Captain Blue Angel, your old droid tutorials were my childhood. Oh, <laughs> that makes me feel so good. Uh, there we are. This message is helpful. Marlene Guzman says, I suck. Shall I show you this? It says, um, this is helpful review. Have a look at this. I'm going to show it. Marlene Guzman says, I suck. There we are. Good. So you've all had a look at that. And I'm going to just remove. <laughs> Yeah. can we still access all of your old drawing tutorials yeah they're all they're all there on um on on youtube all of them and uh and on patreon i've got a whole lot of old stuff on there um all sorts of stuff on there yeah um sevink mm? <laughs> i don't know if that's another language or just gobbledygook anyway kakali modak this guy's amazing thank you um there we are sevink i think he's one of those people who like to type a lot uh duty <laughs> in the big sheds laughing uh priscilla fabian hello from brazil hello um and i think what i'm gonna do there is good i'm gonna do that and <laughs> then i'm gonna do that so the trouble is you start getting sort of people turn up who just because it's live and they're not terribly interested in drawing. Jay's Creative Zone. Hello. Hello, everybody. Miles says I should make a book someday. Yeah, why not? It's You can do that now. Um, <laughs> you know, when, when I was, a, I still got little books that I made as a kid when I was about five, six years old and stitched together with cotton. And um, I've just always loved actually physically making books. I used to make my own sketchbooks too. And um, Yes, yeah, so when I when I left school, I went into printing and everything. So I, I, I just always loved this thing about making books, uh, and I think <laughs> I think it's the actual making that I'm much more interested in than the writing. I think I don't know. So, and nowadays you can do do it, and you know it used to be so difficult to to make a book and publish it and everything, and now it is so easy, um, well relatively easy that you can go on in the Amazon KDP or Lightning Source or something like that um, and uh, and have your book published and, and people can buy it all around the world. Like you can go to Amazon and type in Shoe Rainer. <laughs> buy my books, you can buy my drawing books on there. Now, no, wait till the end of the show. And um, uh, so you can do that and it is easy, um, but you need to learn skills. You need to, um, you know, you need to learn the writing skills. You need to learn the illustration skills or you can hire an illustrator if you're not one yourself. Um, where are we now? Um, Fig Daz, creative job is not a nine to five career. It is not. You live around your work and it's part of you. It absolutely is. And, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I have my little studio here, which I built with my own hands. And I can't, this is my world. I come in here and, and sort of create stuff. Um, and, you know, sometimes I'm here five, six in the morning. So I, I, can't, I can't come in here, I have a wake up with an idea. And I come in here very early and sometimes I'm here sort of very, very late. Um, and it, it's it's not something that you you can just pick up and just do and I think if you're going to make a living out of it it has to be a kind of a 24 hour a day thing um, and your brain is just always thinking about it and you just got to want to do it. it it's a want to do kind of thing there we are 
So, um, uh, Miles says, thanks for the ideas. Bob Box says, I met anyone who can work at something they love doing and pay the bills with it. <laughs> that's that's the hard thing, Matt Marshall. I know, right, Bob? I'd love to do that myself. Yeah. Carolyn, uh, you have been so busy in your garden in spring. Did you have a good harvest? Yes. <laughs> I kind of dug an extra uh, bed for things. So I've had beans and courgettes. Mostly, I think that's, that's mostly what I've had. Uh, beans and courgettes, I think mostly. Well, I can't think what did I have. Mm. Yeah. And tomatoes. Lots and lots of tomatoes. So we've been ratatouilleing all summer. <laughs> um, uh, Lisa Stewart, am I going to draw? I really should, shouldn't I? What what should I draw? This is this is always the thing. You see, people start asking questions on here. I get talking and I forget to draw, and we've almost been an hour, and I never know what to draw. Uh, so, <laughs> so that is the that is the problem. Um, uh, Mark says, I learn lots of stuff. I always look at your videos every day. Fantastic. Thank you. Big Judy says, how's the Walker follow up coming along? Well, I am working on that right at the moment. Um, uh, maybe that's what I should draw. I should draw one of my dogs. So um, let me do some drawing for you. Uh, change the camera. So I'm going to use this. Um, I'm going to use this botanical. Um, oh, paper um yeah and what's interesting with this actually because this is says it's 300 grams per square inch uh, just like the arches and you can see the arches is just not quite as bright white um and and this is 50 percent cotton this is 100 percent cotton and this just feels a little bit thicker um so <laughs> It's padded out with, as I say, it's probably old socks. So at the moment, um, I am drawing, uh, doing, uh, I've, I've, I've almost finished. Actually, when I've finished this show, I will go to um, do the very, very last illustration. Well, it's not the last illustration. Where, where are we now? These are things I've been working on at the moment. So this is the, the, the roughs. And you see it starts off extremely rough. And it's getting slightly less rough. Um, uh, illustration for the second Walker book. So this is the first one that I read about Walker, the boy who can talk to dogs. So I've written the second one. I've got one more illustration to do the rough sketches for. Um, and uh, I just sharpen up my pencil. And so I've got a couple of characters in here. Um, who are pointers. Uh, oh, let me zoom in a bit. And and so I've been... So the more you draw, the more you kind of get to know them. So they have quite sort of square heads. It's quite straight across like that, and sort of big, deep jowls. And, and then they have these lovely ears that kind of flop forward like that. And they're quite long necks and their body is coming there and then their tail will be sticking out as they point and then when you come to draw the body then you want that to be good the deep chest will sort of go like that and then you want a curve coming to the back leg and i was saying last week i think well, last week or week before anyway about drawing dogs legs they're not the best things to draw <laughs> and so you want a little kind of blob down there and he wants to be leaning forward and again we'll have that kind of something that's not long enough is it no it should be much longer yeah so we have that a bit more kind of like that I think and then because he's pointing he'll have his um, paw up like that to let you know and I don't know, will his back leg mm, no we'll bring that forward there I think like that something like that so I'm going to ink this in oh. Looks like a funny angle in the 
uh, picture there. There we go. So, so I'm going to ink this. And then we want to bring that around there a little bit, like that. Mm. And I'm going to make him look forward because he's pointing. And these lovely big floppy ears. And you'll see another one on the other side as well. And he's going to have a, a, a collar with a little message thing like that. Name tag, that's the word I'm looking for. A dog tag, even. <laughs> I think it's the <laughs> official name. So in the military, when they have um, a name round there, a tag round their neck with their rank and number, it's called a dog tag. So we're going to just a little sort of bump there and then point out. And then, oh, I'm not sure about this. So we're going to bring that down a little bit and then down and then something like that. And get that tail quivering because <laughs> he's seen something. And, uh, and then we're going to do that and then a, like a little pad there. The chest coming around there, and then I can go across there. Then this one actually wants to be more down that, like that, into there, and then we want to bring that. Oh no, I think I should have done the other way around. Never mind. Bit of something there, like that. I'm doing this all without any um, reference. <laughs> okay. so this is all out of my imagination. But I've been sketching these dogs, doing rough sketches, so that when, um, so that I can send them to my publisher and say, "What do you think of this? This is what I'm planning to do." I'm going to get my hair dryer. <laughs> I'm going to make a loud noise. That's the bit you never see in my videos. And now I usually come along and say, and when you are absolutely sure that the ink is dry, then you can erase those pencil lines. But when I'm editing, I always edit out <laughs> the hair dryer. <laughs> but that is how I make absolutely sure the ink is dry and I'm trying to find my ah! I'm gonna use my bigger I can't find my little paint set it's, it's under a pile of stuff so I'll use my bigger one but I'm going to use a, a water brush on this and I'm going to so um <clears throat> well if you're out sketching I haven't been drinking my tea that's the problem so if you are out sketching and you only have your water brush um, and you want to clean your palette then you can squeeze it squeeze it gently don't go mad because if you really squeeze it you're going to jam up the the valve part inside it uh, so you can get a bit of water from it to clean your palette like that always have a bit of tissue paper an old napkin kitchen towel something like that as well so i am going to start with those who know me well we go naples yellow yes <laughs> i'm gonna start with naples yellow and I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit i think um because i want a little bit of kind of warmth to the the, the animal here and i'm gonna um put a little bit of naples yellow around the top and the tops of the legs like that and then i'm just gently, gently squeezing. I'm not squeezing, squeezing. I'm just adding a little pressure, <laughs> dib dabbing, so that it just flows a bit extra to get rid of the colour. And then, with, and now I'm painting with just clean, fresh water because there's no paint on the brush. And I'm just kind of pushing it around a bit. I'm getting a bit more in there now. Um, and then. I'm going to get 
Which one is this? Uh, sepia. So I'm going to get sepia and the, the ears want to be sepia. Like that. Oh, there should be a bit of that sienna on the neck as well there. In around there. Um, <coughs> and and around the top of the head and then here it's it's just going to be it's kind of spotty really and again along the back so uh, you're getting different kind of things happening here because I picked up quite a lot of color that time and so it's painting in a kind of quite dry kind of way and and now I'm, I've cleaned the brush, so I'm kind of pulling, pulling the colour about, um, and letting it flow. And have a the tail all like that, and and again I, I haven't got any reference, so I'm making up uh, this uh, colour scheme. And somebody or somebody here is a pointer expert, so that's not a pointer. They don't, they don't have that color scheme or something like that. But um, anyway, it's it's a pointer type. It's it's crossed with something. <laughs> it's crossed with the brown dalmatian. <laughs> so um, this is it's not a it's not a a pointer tutorial. It's a water brush tutorial. So it's talking about water brushes really. And so now I'm adding color and making it sort of stronger and we want it a bit darker around there like that and I'm going to add a little bit of neutral tint to it just to make it a bit darker there this curve should have gone the other way I'm afraid so I wonder if I can do that or something like that that'll mm. While I'm doing as an illustrator, you see, I'm I'm thinking, oh, that's okay. I can fix that in Photoshop. Um, but if I was an artist <laughs> wanting to sell prints, well, if, if you're going to sell prints, you can fix it in Photoshop too, can't you? If I wanted to sell original artwork, then uh, I'd probably be a little bit more careful and not uh, and think, just think maybe I should do this, you know, and, and just check before I did things. But I, I've just been using Photoshop <laughs> so much that, and most of my work gets scanned. You know, the, my work work gets scanned, which I send off to publishers, and uh, so I always know that I can fix it. And in fact, that's what they want me to do. They want me to fix it. And, you know, in in the old days, I used to have to pack up my artwork, go down to the post office, <laughs> a great big parcel full of artwork, and they go, "Hello, what's it this time?" So I'd have to have a chat with the post office lady all about what was in the package, what the new book was. And I missed that actually, and um, and then I'd send it off, and I think, "Oh, I hope it's all right." And, Eventually they get it, and then sometimes they would send the artwork out to Hong Kong or China to get it scanned. <laughs> and so I got all this artwork, and uh, you know you always worry that you're ever going to get it back again as well. But I got all this artwork up in the attic, and so much as of it has got Chinese written all over it from the the printers who are scanning it. <laughs> and uh, there we go. Uh, I think maybe I need just a tiny little bit more. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so in the old days, that's all I had to do was actually paint the picture and go to the post office. <laughs> and now when you've finished, oh, now I've got to scan it. And... Um, and now again, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to plug Patreon again. Thank you, Nicole. I just saw Nikki just going to mention something. Uh, I saw a comment and she's, one of my trusty patrons on Patreon, and um, I, I bought myself a new scanner on eBay. Thanks, 
very much to my patrons. And I've, I've always just had kind of okay scanners before and and I thought I really, really, really need to do this properly. And I thought, can it, can another scanner be <laughs> any better? And I've been doing research. And so it's a, what's it? It's an Epson Perfection V800 photo. And um, that's, that's the one that sort of kept coming up. And so I've been looking out on eBay and looking out on eBay. And I got one this week. Well, it, I think it came last Friday or something like that. And yes, a quality scanner makes a big, big difference. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to come back to your questions and I'll come back here. And uh, as I say, I'm very grateful to my patrons. Uh, in the meantime, I tell you what, while, while I'm just thinking about this, very quickly, while you are watching this, look for a subscribe button and click it and then click the little bell that pops up and then click the word all and then you will be notified next time I have a live stream coming up because you'd much rather be watching this live than watching it afterwards. Go on, make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Live drawing channel. Oh yes, oh yes, it's down there or down there. Click that button, <laughs> click that button, make sure you are subscribed keep going back to the shoe and drawing channel and let me have a look at your what have you been saying um uh, do you like drawing dogs or animals uh um hang on no, let's go just before that uh how's welcome uh think dads i used to make my own fighting fantasy books the ones you roll a dice and turn the page to see your fate i based it on my school friend and teachers sold them for 10p each <laughs> brilliant <laughs> Uh, says draws far from upset. Oh, good. I'm most honoured to have gotten feedback from me. Thank you. Good. Happy to to get feedback from you. Someone with such a wealth of knowledge and experience. Thank you. Good. Um, I'm very pleased. That makes me feel a lot better. Uh, Robster, do you like drawing dogs or animals? I, I like drawing all sorts of stuff. It's it's. And I start off thinking, oh, I don't want to draw that, <laughs> and then I force myself to, and and eventually you kind of get the the nurse i've said this before you, you get the oh fire engine or something like that. um you get the the nurse of something uh the thing you know that like a the doggy nurse or the cattiness whoa please there go. <laughs> and uh there's a raid um go not here no anyway so you, you've got to find the, the the nurse and and then you know oh you think oh cats and dogs and oh i hate drawing these things and i hate drawing those back legs and and then suddenly one day you get it and you think oh right and and you just want to keep drawing it and and it you know and so uh, i i like to try and draw everything i think um and i think so yeah i think it's very I, th I think it's 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 comfortable to 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 get to be able to draw one thing and become a dog artist and just draw dogs all day long and and that's there's nothing wrong with that at all um i think i i would get bored because that's the way i am and so i just want to keep sort of trying trying new stuff i'm i'm a i'm a new <laughs> what's the word uh, somebody out there, somebody who's into new stuff all the time, a new, new, neuro, anyway, <laughs> neuro, not neurophile, novophile, I don't know, something like that. Um, do you like drawing dogs or animals? There we are, big set, had Judy, um, Kal Kakali Modak, well, what's the other channel's name? It's called Draw Stuff Real Easy. Uh, and Matt Marshall's written it, there you go. <laughs> Uh, oh, the reading one. The reading one is called Learn English Through Story. Yeah, there we are. I'll put a link in the comments box down below afterwards. Uh, Nath Nathalia Rivers, thanks for the idea, issue. I have trouble with composition. Any recommendations? <sighs> I don't know. I, I, I've been doing it so long, it sort of comes naturally and instinctively now. But I think I think if you go and learn some perspective, I think that's a really good thing to do. Um, and I think if you do a lot of lot of practice on perspective, and if you go and if you type into the shoe rainer drawing perspective, you'll find I've done various videos about perspective. Um, and I think if you do lots of perspective drawing studies, 
what happens is you build up uh, it's like a little box inside your head <laughs> with all little squares and things inside and you can tilt it inside your head and um, not only can you tilt it you can stretch it and, <laughs> uh, and after a while you can do that and you can use that box like a little stage um, in your head that then you can kind of compose things and put things in there uh, I'm, I'm halfway through this thing I was doing. I've, I've, I've had to sort of do, do these uh, rough sketches, which have sort of slowed me down on other things. Uh, but I was halfway through this thing about drawing landscape. So there's one more video I want to make about that, uh, which will kind of talk about that. So I'll, I'll, I'll do that in the next couple of weeks. Um, learn English through story. Yes, there we are. Good, thank you. Let me check it out. Uh, no problem. I'm happy to help. Blah blah. blah, 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 blah. Big set. That's really useful advice about squeezing the brush, uh, causing it to clog. Thanks. Solves a mystery. I know it's. It took me a while to work it out. I think so. It's gently, gently. I think. I think it's because. I think the thing about water brushes is because they're plastic and they look cheap <laughs> that you kind of treat them as being plastic and cheap but they are in fact really 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 nice things um which it took me a while to really appreciate that and so if you if you're gentle with them they will work with you <laughs> um Melody to go. Naples yellow was one of the first Windsor and Newton colours I bought. Of course, this was because of me. <laughs> that started my watercolour addiction. Uh, also, neutral tint is legit one of my favourite colours now. I probably use it too much. I do. I, I use those two colours a huge amount. Um, but that, that's that's. It doesn't matter because that that becomes your thing. My thing is Naples yellow, <laughs> neutral tint, and between between those two things, they affect my style and make what I do personal. Um, uh, Nikki, uh, right, it goes from simple doodle to a dick. Oh, what have we got that? I missed something there. Uh, to a dog that looks like a proper character. I missed something there then somewhere that I, I Nikki, Nikki said, amazing how just a bit of colour brings it to life. There we are. Um, uh, oh, Henley looks fabulous. Are you using watercolour? Yes, I am. And it's this yeah where are we now this is my little tin of watercolors here um can i switch over yeah so i i bought this um <laughs> i was i was really lucky um when i went to art school because it was still you could get a grant um it, so I, w I was lucky to get a grant not everybody could get a grant but i did get a grant so i i, I didn't have to pay fees and I got a council grant which paid my, um, you know, uh, paid my living and stuff. I was incredibly lucky in those days. Um, and I really do feel for students these days who have to pay these ridiculous amounts of money. Um, and um, but I, I, th I think it was a post-war thing where they were kind of trying to build a new generation. And, you know, so they were putting money into students to build a new generation. So, so I hope I, I hope I've built a new generation for the previous generation. Um, and and my so my first week at art college and I saw everybody got these nice watercolour sets. So I went down to Heifer's art shop in Cambridge, um, which was probably still is. I imagine it's still there. It was a lovely, lovely art shop. And I bought the tin which was just incredibly expensive but i've been given this grant so i had money sitting in the bank and then i just went along and i didn't know what colors to pick so i just picked colors i kind of looked like and i'm basically using most of those colors still today i think and i never really changed um and and uh and it's a lovely lovely tin but i don't think they make them like this anymore they're all plastic and everything now which is a shame um dum 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 uh, using watercut yes 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 held for a review so we don't need to see that uh, uh hey i used to watch your videos and draw four to five years ago still watch videos great Svard Lehman, how are you holding down in the pandemic and has it affected your work i've just been at it really um i'm just gonna keep keep keep, keep going actually Svard Lehman's in sweden way i think i think you're you've done quite well so far on the pandemic but i think it's starting to go up now isn't it in sweden 
Clay, hi Clay, how are you doing? Better late than never. <laughs> Good to see you too. Uh, there we go. We don't need to see that. We don't need to see that. I can just go and hide that user. There we go. We don't need to see any of that. <laughs> Uh, Carolyn, it was a pleasure to watch. Goodbye, Champion of John. Goodbye, Carolyn. How are you doing? Yes, I think it's time I probably went as well. So do you have a video on watercolour in different textures for animal hair, fur, etc.? No, <laughs> I, do, I don't really do texture. As you can see on this, it, it's it's splodgy, isn't it, really? Um, so I don't really go a bundle on texture. You know, I know some people do that really fine, 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 photorealistic kind of texture. I don't. <laughs> um, I can come back to that. I'm going to finish these questions and things here. Uh, Heffers is still there. I think that's great. Good to hear that. Uh, Jackson's Art do a metal tin. Not too pricey, just like yours. Good. I bet it's not as heavyweight as mine is. <laughs> like, like, like they used to. I think this was probably. I think this was probably designed in Victorian times and still made that way when I got it, and then everything changed, didn't it? So, uh, Spark Demon still make tins. I have a watercolour set. Mr. Love Art draws. Hi, sir. Your video help and satisfy a lot. Excellent. Good. Well, I'm going to call that it. Oh, I missed it. Sonia Ball. Hi from Tunisia. Cool. <laughs> I'm going to sort of think I'm going to call that a day now. Uh, Valeria says, it's beautiful. Yeah, my traditional drawings come out flat recently. I get disappointed. Oh, any pointers? Hmm, shading. And that's what I use the neutral tint for. Okay. <laughs> so thank you all very much. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. And uh, I think I'll probably be here next week. Because <laughs> we're still in lockdown. And uh, very exciting. Uh, there's a webinar for a local thing. Something's going on very, very locally. They are bringing fibre into town. And uh, so oh, then I'll be able to do these live streams in mega this and mega that in high quality, big HD, all that kind of stuff. So thank you very much. And if you want to learn exactly. Uh, thank you, Pam Walker. Yep. Uh, good night. I think you need to get back to bed. Uh, and yeah. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just about to click that. No, what's happened? Outro. There we go. I'm going to say cheerio, except I think that's not going to work. It's not going to work. Something's gone wrong. I've lost something. And so if I come over here uh, and I find that and I drop that there. Well, thank you so much for watching and make sure you click that little subscribe button and when you do, ring the bell so that you get notifications of when I am going to go live next. You can come along and join in and bring your ideas as well. In the meantime, stay safe, keep well and keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.